Well, good afternoon, Mel. Hey, good. how are you? Good. Welcome back. Nice to be back. Yeah, we've had a two or three weeks off, and I, you have some exciting things to share with us about your trip. Um, I have to say thank you to Mayflower Cruises and Tours. They're the tour operator here that put it together. And thanks to the ground operator in Uganda, Hornbill uh, Tours. Uh, Hornbill Tours uh, supplied our safari vehicles, our driver guides. We had three mm -hmm. safari vehicles. We had, I think, 16 or 17 people, not in one vehicle, three different vehicles. Okay. Uh, and it was the most incredible trip I've ever had. Wow. It was totally amazing. Um, you know, in Uganda, they passed an anti-gay law where you could go to jail or, uh, you know, death penalty. And people were saying, be careful. You know, I didn't go there to flaunt my sexuality. I went to connect with nature and it was a cultural experience as well. But I have to say the Ugandan people that I met were so friendly and warm and welcoming and, you know, we were in places where, well, the lodges we stayed were nice. We glamped. But some of the villages that we went through, no refrigeration, no running water, no electricity. Mm. Uh, and so when I hear people complain here about what they don't have, I'm thinking, whoa, you know, step back from that. The people there that, that you know, that didn't have running water or refrigeration or anything, they weren't complaining. They seemed happy. You know, uh, the, here's a, a typical, here's a, you've got in kitchen and this lady is making a certain type of dough for bread that, that we tasted. Uh, and then you dip in peanut sauce oh. and it's really cook over an open fire. Wow. And, um, oh yeah. Was, that's good. When you do it really close like that, I can see it more. Okay. Nice. And the, the leaf is a banana leaf. Okay. You need to press it. Press the light again. Yeah. Um, it was. Banana leaf. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, so that is their, her stove. Okay. Um, and as, and, and then the millet, the flour, they grind by hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, wait, let me just find the video here. Okay. So here we go. You'll see that she is grinding or she's going to grind. Give me one second. I just got to find the right video. Oh, it's okay. Give me one minute here. I remember when I was in Thailand. There we uh, go. Go ahead. Oh, well. Can you see it? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of work. So she ground the millet and the flour and, 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 um, then they cook it and it makes like a like a doughy kind of paste and then they you you grab you take it with your hand they wash your hands and then they pour you coffee and then you they give you a banana a little sweet little banana and then you take this piece of dough and you put a little hole in it and you and there's a peanut sauce you put in there and oh it was God. really delicious oh my god um, it was really good and oh. um, I was just like, wow. Um, but when, when she's grinding the bread and when she's working, they sing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the song is, we grind the bread, uh, we, we make the coffee, and then we eat. And let me see if I can find the recording of that because it was so cool. Uh, is this it? Yeah. Hold on, give me a second. I'm also of the millet. Um, I'm just looking. I'm trying to find the video. That's fine. Take your time. Trying to find when you're trying to look for something. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's awesome. So wow. um, the, 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 the chant was, you know, we grind the bread, uh, we make the bread, and then we eat. And uh, 
you, you know, they're like, they're singing and they're dancing and they're, you know, they're having a good time with it. It's not like, oh God, I got to cook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I got to walk from my house to my car and it's hot outside. Correct. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that they were doing it for us. I think that they, that's just the way of life. Uh-huh. Was it hot or what was the temperature like? Um, the temperature, it depends. Like when we were in Kampala, it was probably 75 or 80. It rained one day. We ended up in Windy. So we started up north in Uganda or in the central and we drove all the way down uh, to north, south, east, west, to southwest Uganda. And the Windy and Penetrable Forest is where the mountain gorillas are. Uh -huh. And that's a tropical rainforest. And that's south of the equator. The country's both north and south of the equator. Okay. So the water goes the opposite way. Ah. The, part, the north part, it goes the way it goes here. It's really oh, my cool. goodness. Yep. So um, in Wendy, you know, in the mornings, it's, if it would rain, the day that we hiked up to see the gorillas and the sun came out, and it gets, the temperature was like around, Mm, 88 which doesn't sound like a lot 83 84 but it's steamy because mm -hmm. it's so moist mm -hmm. and i took my glasses out and they were just fogged up you know <laughs> but um yeah you know it's it's a height to see those gorillas i want to tell you something um because it's uphill like uh -huh. that and so there's through three different tours there's one that takes two and a half hours one takes like four hours and one's all day and I'm like I cannot do like my back was bothering me so I took some ibuprofen and I hired two porters one to push and one to pull <laughs> so I'm gonna put my rear end up that mountain so we had about two and a half hours and then we came on a hillside and all of a sudden you see the gorillas it was like um we hiked in to see our family was called they're different families of gorillas and not all the families are uh acclimated but many of them are and our family was called Katwe, and there were seven and so two silverbacks and there was a baby and oh it was so amazing okay how we, close were you able to um well you say you can't get within six feet but they can get closer to you i see so one i was standing here and there was a bush here and she was in the bushes and she was eating bait <laughs> leaves and she was um and when they she looked right at me and if they look at you you, you, you put your head down like this yeah um and they called her the complainer because <laughs> was very vocal so i you know the hillside was like this it was that steep so i'm standing here i'm here and my great niece my niece is sitting on the ground and the bush was here and it was only about three feet away and so this gorilla she went like she started walking toward me and she looked at me and she changed directions and she went down in front of my great niece she looked at my niece and she's going ooh, 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 you know like vocalizing and my niece looked down and the gorilla just looked at my niece she walked over by me and went right back in the bush and started eating Oh my gosh, she just had to look at you. Oh. You know, on the moderate tour, that was the one that was like four hours. Um, hi, Kelly. <laughs> the gorilla was, it's funny, the gorilla grabbed her butt. <laughs> <laughs> she was standing and she said, This thing grabbed her butt and she just loved it. It just kind of kept walking. And you think she got like goosed by a gorilla. Oh my gosh. Uh, it was the most incredible experience, but we had to wear masks because oh. um, they have 98% of our DNA. Uh -huh. And so they don't want them to get human diseases, but uh -huh. here it is. Oh. oh my goodness. I didn't take that picture. Somebody shared it with me. Yeah. Uh, but this was in our group. This was the one I was talking about that was so near. Oh my goodness. She looks a little older. Yeah. Um, and this is um uh -huh. wow. It's just the most incredible experience to see these magnificent animals. And then what happens is is when you're done, uh, they give you uh, a certificate to say that you did it. 
Um, and this is me, and this guy was our guide. Oh. Oh. Wow. Um, you know, it was, uh, I'll show you a typical, well, this was a village we came on. Um, and they said, we'll walk back through the village. And I thought they were just talking about like a regular village village, right? Uh, but no, this was like so cool. Let me, let me just find the picture. It was, okay, here we go. That's the village. Oh my. Yeah. Beautiful. Isn't that neat? People yeah. live in those little huts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so and this was the guy and I call this trust because he hit my hand and I I took the picture by accident but he he held my hand the whole time oh wow that one trust wow <laughs> uh, he was his name was Moses and I was like wow um, now here's a girl I was talking about that was so close to me uh-huh. Uh-huh. She was grooming. But I can see the bugs in the air. Oh yeah. But you know, we sprayed permethrin on our clothes so that you know the bugs didn't come around, but there she is. You can uh -huh. see it's really close. Uh-huh. Oh so, um, that's awesome. And there's a baby. I've got one of the baby in the tree. There was one frolicking in the tree. It was so cute. Um let me see here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, but, and then um, on one of the uh, camps, we actually hiked up to see the chimpanzees as well. So wow, that one was cool too. Um, the chimpanzees were pretty amazing. They vocalize a lot. Here, mm -hmm. here. You can see the baby going up the tree. Oh my goodness. Wow, the arms are so long. Whoa. Oops, there we go. Oh my. <laughs> yes. So that was really neat. Um, Can you show that picture again of them of that group dancing and also how tall you were compared to one of the oh the Bwindi. Yes. Uh, give me one second, I'll show you. Well, here they are dancing for us. <laughs> Oh my goodness. He's doing a Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, and let me find the picture of me and the Bundy guy. Um, here. <laughs> so what would you say? He's less than five feet tall. Probably around four foot eight, maybe. Yeah. And here, you know, he's telling a story. Uh, so he's a good storyteller, but he didn't speak English. So we had a translator, but he acted everything out. It was really cool. <laughs> I mean, the people were so friendly and warm. And this is a place where, you know, uh, when the people would go out to hunt and gather, um, they would, you know, whoever watched the baby, they would take them up into one of these little huts they built in the tree. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, my. Uh, but you have to remember these people are only about four foot five. They're not tall at all. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of because they've, you know, because they have, um, I don't want to say interbred, that's not the right word, but mixed with other tribes, you know, in the area, there's not a lot of short windy left. Oh, um, wow. But um, they try to, you know, they try to hold their culture. And it's really neat. Um, we stayed in some phenomenal places. Um, you know, the Mahogany Springs is where we stayed. And this is how they fed us at dinner. They would. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Isn't that cool? Wow. Luxury. Well, it was, uh, you know, here was our table. Yes. Uh, yeah. That was, a, that, was a, that was in Windy, the Impenetrable Forest. And here's our bedroom. Oh, my. Yeah. When you eat dinner, then they go in your room and put the mosquito nets around the bed. Okay. Uh -huh. so, yeah. And then we went. Uh, so this is where we ended up. And but then we also went on the savannah. Uh, 
uh, here. So I've got some great pictures of uh, elephants. Um, and one elephant charged our van oh. <laughs> at, of, uh, at least like three times. He was like, um, he wasn't having it. I think that's a water buck or something. Uh-huh. Bless book, maybe? This is, on, okay. this is on the savannah. Okay, yeah. This is this is a long, it took us like four or five hours to get from here to Bwindi because the roads m most of the roads are unpaved and whoa so one night when we were at Kasani uh, Safari Camp they the last night they were there they made dinner for us and we ate in the bush and um, but the the lions hide in those bushes and so they they had you know, guards there and all of that. <laughs> um, and and from typically, there it is. And so typically from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. when we wanted to leave our tent, they would send a guard to come and get us because the lions hide in the bush and they didn't want anybody to get attacked by a lion. Uh -huh. um, let's see here. I'll show you the tent. It was glamping. Yeah. Um, I'll show you the elephant that um one are, of the, the, are the restrooms like in a special place or something? No, we had bathrooms in our in oh, the tent. Oh. Yeah. I mean it's just like it's like a bedroom. And we had you know hot and cold running water. Oh wow. But we had all of that. Okay. Uh, here's the hippos. <gasps> oh my goodness. That's amazing. Oh. That's wonderful. Oh, I see elephant back there. Yeah, there's some the elephants. Yeah, the elephants are drinking water. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Nice. We were pretty close to them. We run a boat. Um, one hippo charged the boat, but you know we didn't have to worry. I mean, you know, here's a water buffalo. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Um. We saw lions up close and personal. I mean, very up close and personal. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the guy who charged us. I see. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I mean, whole herds of elephants. It was amazing. Here's warthogs. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, just go on and on. Here was the tent, our tent. Oh my goodness, that does not look like a tent. Um, it's got a roof over it. Uh, and it looks like that from the outside. There's a there's a a, a wall around it to keep the lions out and hippos out. Because mm -hmm. hippos don't have sweat glands. So they stay in the water during the day and at night they come out to eat. Um so the place we stayed looked like that. Oh my goodness. Uh I'll show you a picture of the inside if I can find it. Oops, let me see here. What was the inside of our tent? Now that I'm looking for it, I won't be able to find it. Well, let me see here. Darn it. Give me one second. I shall find oh here it is. So this was the inside of our tent. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that does not look like a tent to me, but okay. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, so that was Kasani Safari Camp. Um, here was the, you know, here was the like reception area. Uh -huh. Now, when you were with uh, on the different tours, was it just your group or were there other people coming too? No, it was just our group. Okay, how nice. Um, you know, and typically you don't get, to, I mean, typically you might see lions, but not up close and personal. So we got up at dawn before the sun came up and we were out on the savannah about five minutes. This is in Queen Elizabeth National Park because Kasani uh, Safari Camp is on one side of the street and the park's on the other. And it's, the park is huge. And there, and all of a sudden, all the drivers of the, our safari vehicles, they had the tops up, they pulled over, they put the headlights on and there was a pride of lions. And so... <laughs> Um, wow wow oh yeah. Mel that's a trip of a lifetime for sure yeah we were up close and personal um, this lion fascinated me he was a young male um, and here's the sun coming up 
Oh, nice. Oh, wow. I got some uh, here. This guy. <gasps> oh, my. The, the light in the background, that's the headlights from the safari vehicles. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. it was so dark. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, it was amazing. And so, um, you know, well, here, this this is a blurry picture because the lion was crossing the road, but you can kind of see it's still dark. My, yes, I can see. Because the lion's- Do you do any animal talk or, you know, telepathic communication with the, any of the animals? Well, I kind of put it out there that I, I wanted to see lions up close and personal. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, here we there's the, the lions. Let me see if this is the one. The lions were chasing hyenas, and I didn't get the whole video. I tried to, but I kind of screwed it up. But um, you know, they the hyenas we saw them too. They come out to they come out to eat the carrion left by the lions, and the lions weren't liking the hyenas, and so they they chased them. Um, but I've got it on video somewhere. I don't know if this is it, but so you can see the lion sauntering away. Yes. Wow. That's a pretty big one. Yeah, that was a female. Wow. It looks um, but they run pretty fast. And all of a sudden they were laying there and their ears perked up and there was a herd of antelope in the distance. But, you know, the, our guide said that they had probably eaten that morning uh, or, you know, sometimes they can go for a week without eating. Oh. So, um, they they probably weren't hungry <laughs> but they hunt in the morning and then they go back into the bush in the shade in the afternoon so mm -hmm. you know they they kind of got it they kind of got it right <laughs> uh -huh. yes. i can't find the video of them chasing the hyenas so and we also saw hyenas and um oh my goodness just all kinds of like it was just amazing we went to a salt mining community where they where they mine salt well they actually manufacture salt so there's a salt lake and then they make these pot these little things like this and they put this they put the water in and as the water evaporates they the salt crystallizes and they and they mine it oh my gosh uh there was a lady there and we asked if she could take her if we could take her picture and she said yes but if we would just give her some refreshment she went money for refreshment so i gave her like uh 20,000 ugandan shillings I mean, I mean, yeah 20,000 which boiled down to not a lot of money at all and so she smiled and he said you've just made her day that's enough money for her for two weeks salary so i gave her another 20,000 i said make it four weeks and i gave her another 20,000 i said make it six weeks so <laughs> 60,000 came out to about $16. Oh my goodness. For, for six weeks pay, so. Wow. And here we are at the equator acting silly. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so um, it was a really neat trip. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Um, we saw all kinds of baboons. They're everywhere, uh, as evidenced by that. Yes. Oh, wow. They come up on the side of the road because I think they, they're looking for something to eat. Um, and here's another woman making coffee. The co That was the best coffee I've ever had, actually. Really? She's roasting the coffee on an open Wow. Plate. So she's just cooking it over the stove like that. Wow. The coffee beans. She didn't have a percolator, huh? No, they're, they're, those, these beans were raw and she's roasting them. And then when they roast them, they put them in... Um, Remember the, the one I showed you of the guy pounding? Yes. Um, that's how they grind the coffee beans. They pound them. And so when they're, once they're roasted, they look like that. Okay. And uh, yeah. it, it was pretty amazing to see how they did it. This lady grew her own coffee. You know, a lot of these people grow their own food. So they're, they're you know, it's, it's plantains, uh, maybe bananas, uh, beans, a lot of peanuts. Um, lots of coffee but it was it was still pretty cool here's the chimpanzees we got up close and personal to them as well 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, and as we as we came up on them, there was this little baby chimp. Oh, he was so cute. Now this is not the baby, but yeah. look at that. He's daydreaming in the sky. Well, they they vocalize, but uh -huh. this little baby was so oh, was so adorable. And let's see, it laid right in front of me. <laughs> oh. So um, when they vocalize, it's pretty amazing. Let me see. Uh, is it? No, here he's turning over. Uh huh. He was performing for us. Uh huh. Just being himself. Yeah, it was really hot that day. Um, but it's humid. That's the humidity that 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 gets you. Uh huh. Um, let me see if I can find the vocalizations. Somebody sent me when they were vocalizing, but uh, I mean, it's all of a sudden this whole chimp chorus starts up, and it's it's pretty amazing. Um, it's like ooh, ooh, ooh. And the, I mean, all of a sudden they're all and they start climbing the trees and uh, they're they're talking to each other, and it was like. This this male that was interested in the female, but she wasn't interested in him. And she's telling him, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Just like us. Oh my goodness. Right. Um, and here's where we stayed, another place in Taraco. Oh, beautiful. So I mean, all the safari camps were pretty amazing. We visited, we planted trees there uh, to help refor to regrow the forest. Um, so we got to do that. Um, it was, let's see what else we wouldn't, we visit, we, blah, blah, blah. we visited a Ugandan school. This mm -hmm. guy got right up and close and personal to the, oh. yeah. now what is that? It's a baboon. A baboon. Yeah. Okay. Um, the baboons are everywhere. I've got a picture of one somewhere, but I can't find it. But so we visited a school and they danced for us. And that was really <laughs> cool. And of course, I had to get out there and dance with them, of course. <laughs> I know you love to dance. I love to dance. And so uh, let me see if I can find the school here real quick. Uh, that was pretty amazing. We we visited a mosque. Oh. It was really neat. Um, here. Uh, here's the dance. Oh, my. Wow, they're in unison. How old were these? They look pretty old. I'm sorry. Oh, they look pretty old. Oh, they're teenagers. Okay. Um, this was a school. Uh huh. And they live there, and oh. part of the money from this from this goes to help these students in the school. Here was a classroom. Oh, nice. Look at that. Very simple. Very simple. Yeah. Very simple. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. I'll show you the chalkboard, which we haven't seen in years. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So it was really, and you know, they have like the little body parts. <laughs> oh my gosh. The kids make the posters. Um, so it was pretty amazing. I mean, it was just really an awesome trip. This was from the mosque. Oh my. Uh, the women had to cover and dress to go in the mosque. And so um, they had stuff where, well here, this is Vivian and Martha. And they, <laughs> like, you know, we had our regular clothes on, but you go in this little room and they got all these, the shawls and things they 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 wrap the women with and it's really cool to watch uh here you can see one person getting wrapped oh okay yeah all the way down to the ankle floor yes um uh, so anyway it was the it was the most incredible experience i guess the highlight people asked me was when we would go through the villages and we'd see the school kids and our guides would tell them, wave at the kids because the kids would go back and say, oh, wow, they waved at me. And so yeah. all these little kids were waving and we were waving and they would sing. 
And it, you know, if we'd get out of the vehicles, um, the kids would come up and we'd high five the kids and they were just, oh my goodness. It was just, the kids were, the, they were so well behaved and just so, so cool. Yeah. Um, it was just an amazing experience. So my goodness that, I mean, whoa, I definitely want to do that or something like that. Well, we're going to do Kenya and Tanzania next. So <laughs> Kenya and Tanzania, Kenya. Okay. Uh, that's going to be, um, that'll be more on the savannas where we're going to go see giraffe, rhinos, lions, uh -huh. uh, things like that. We'll go to the Aldivai Gorge where HSB Leakey discovered Australopithecus afarensis. He thought it was the miss missing evolutionary link. And it's kind of neat stuff. Oh so. my gosh, that's awesome. Wow. So how was Mount Shasta? Well, I, I have to say it's not as exotic as that. Um, but it was Mount Shasta was wonderful. One of the things I would say that the biggest thing was the people there, the energy, the vibes, the energy at Mount Shasta is remarkable. In Mount Shasta itself is a small town. I would say there's only just a few blocks of the downtown, but about every other store is a crystal store. Crystal yeah. stores and then readers and people walking around that could look like St. Germain or people walking around maybe even in white, all white robes, a lot of people in all white. So you can find anything you want as far as healing, harmonic egg. I had a harmonic egg healing experience. So I um, <laughs> I went into this egg, it's, a, it's about an 11 foot egg. I went in and I was in a recliner kind of a thing. My feet were up. And she played music. So she asked you, what is it that you want? And I said, I want uh, activation DNA so that I may know my, my heritage uh, to activate my DNA. Okay, so, so she played music that would do that. <laughs> Whether or not, I don't know if I came out any different than when I went in, but she, and then she put on different colors. It was mainly purple and blue for me. And I sat in and I pretty much fell asleep because I was so tired because I was really, it seemed like I was kind of just been on, on the go, 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 you know? Um, but it was lovely. So there was that. And if you, oh, I think, I think Danny did a spinning, a spinning table. He laid down and the table was spinning around. Now, I don't know why, but he said it was awesome. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My vertigo would have been going, no way. <laughs> I know. So there's all kinds of different he healing. Um, in the, the, the weather. So we were, you know, a week before, well, last year at this time we went and there was no snow. This year, there was three feet of snow where we were planning to meet. So we had to last minute change our plans and meet at a retreat center, which actually turned out to be lovely. And actually, I think it was better because it was private, beautiful. Um, the, it was a, so you had to enter a gate. As soon as you entered the gate, you felt the magic of the gnomes and the fairies. I mean, you could really feel it. And when I was meeting people, when they were first coming, it's like, oh my gosh, I mean, I was getting all kinds of information about them that I would not normally meet, you know, get if I was just meeting somebody. But I, I, my intention was to do a little like healing as we, you know, around the circles as they were coming into circle. But I couldn't, I was so much information coming. I couldn't really, I was just too, too much. I never even got to everybody, except at the end, I ended up, you know, getting around to almost everybody probably. But, but it was, so that part was wonderful. Some people are calling it's like a love fest because because the love, everybody had a beautiful heart, um, loving energy. It was just free to say, I love you. Everybody was just, I love you. I love you. Hugs, cry, tears. I love you. It was, that part was amazing. <laughs> our, yeah. group, our group, the group that we had, um, you know, it was, I think, 16 or 17 of us. It was a... Um, it was the best group that I, that I've ever traveled with. I mean, everybody just bonded. Yeah. So life changing. And I sent everybody one of these. I sent everybody a little gorilla. Oh, how cute. <laughs> to Uganda 2023. Uh -huh. So this is Yeah. Life. Okay. I never thought I might, maybe would show you some pictures. We also went to a place called the Peace Card. Well, I'll show you where we, the retreat center quickly. Some, I mean, it's not going to be nearly like the exotic stuff. Um, if I have to go back a little bit on my pictures here, but she had this Kuan Yin. Well, first of all, there was this big, I don't know if you can tell, that's a huge rose quartz 
Oh, wow. Yeah. It's humongous. That's humongous. Rose. That court, rose quartz was talking to us. I mean, it was amazing. The, the energy of that rose quartz. And here's my daughter. Um, she, she had been gifted that morning. Beautiful like her mother. Ah, thank you. Um, somebody gave her those, those butterfly wings. Oh, wow. I mean, just, this is how people were. Here, I've got these extra set of, you know, just here, here, let me give you this. You know, it, it was like that. It was, um, and here's where we, I don't know if you can see, underneath that gazebo. Yep. Okay. That's where we met for our morning circle. Wow. Um, oh, and here's a Kuan Yin statue. Oh, cool. And that was, at the, you can see that's very tall. She had that come from Kuan Yin from China? I think. Okay, she had it shipped from China. Um, the lady Catherine, who she lives at the retreat center, but she also rents it out. And so just some of the things, here's a, one of the waterfalls. That's beautiful. Yeah, this is all on the retreat center grounds. Wow. Yeah, so really. Um, now, I don't know why I took this is just a car in front of me, the warrior. And I thought I had to take a picture of that I'm thinking the peace warrior, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I was and getting he, all kinds of synchronicity too. There was a truck in front of us and it says, uh, never, never give up hope. And uh, on the airplane going, there was a woman sitting next to me from the, on the way from Amsterdam to Entebbe. And she was a surgeon and she was going to go to, um, Tanzania to, uh, work and, and do surgeries, you know, and some of the clinics there. And I was telling her about this and she gave me a lot of encouragement. So there was just all kinds of synchronicity. And see for you too, right? That never give yeah. up. And that's what that reminded me of, the warrior, the synchronicity. Yeah. Here's, here we are around circle in the morning. Oh, wow. That's uh -huh. beautiful. What was the temperature? Um, well, in the mornings, it was kind of cold. Sometimes we were wearing blankets, but, wow. uh, but in the afternoons, it got warmer. Well, how warm is warm? Seventy. <laughs> um, oh, that's not bad. Yeah, around that. Um, let's see here. What are we doing? Okay, here's a group picture. Oh, cool. Uh huh. Uh, oh. Let me see if I had something else. Oh yeah, well there was one dog that joined us. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I had to get, I worked hard to get the dog to come. And then here's uh, Alice and Kelly um, as we were. Oh, know. yeah. Yeah, I know um, the one on the end. She comes to Sedona. Yes, Alice. Alice. She was just in Sedona. That's right. And also Linda Pointer, who was just in Sedona. She was there as well. I said, I probably shouldn't. Oh, yeah, here's the egg I did. Oh, cool. <laughs> I mean, it's just very new agey stuff, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it was lovely. It was, no, that was, it was lovely. We did a, um, some fun, um, lots, of, I mean, lots of laughs. We had lots of laughs. Oh. And, and lots of love, lots of laughs. Uh, it was great, you know, just see people that, a lot of people, We've met here on YouTube. I mean, most of them. There's only maybe two people. One one lady had never seen anything about anybody, uh, didn't know about YouTube, nothing. She just looked online for Shasta for some reason. She's from South Carolina. She and her husband and her dog got in the car and drove up to Mount. It was the only one she could see was ours. And so she came. A lot she, of my group were people from YouTube in Africa. Oh, uh, wow. Well, Wow. Some people that I knew, like that, I think, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. But the rest of them were from YouTube. Nice. Yeah. So, so, and then we went to the Peace Garden. You see the Peace Garden here? Wow. So that was pretty incredible. People put all kinds of uh, prayer flags. I mean, here's how many, look at that. Wow. It's a little place you walk through, and there was one place just for pets. There's a Kuan Yin again. That's really cool. And they would donate their jewelry, coins, whatever. Um, sometimes there was a box there that you 
with pen markers and you could tie your your prayer flag on you know uh, anywhere you wanted there was one of saint francis and there was a labyrinth made out of flowers well that's neat yeah I and mean, there's a mother mary in the middle there i see that yeah yep yeah. um and here's just a bit picture of the scenery it's beautiful yeah yeah you know so yeah fine there's a butterfly oh that's a good picture uh, yeah there's a lot of there's a, quite a few butterflies so um that yeah i'm glad you had a good time yeah i'm, I'm still i just got back yesterday oh wow so, we got back uh on the 16th saturday but we had flown over 20 hours and actually it ended up being over 30 hours because with the layovers in the airports and things like that. And so we got in on Saturday and I was so jet lagged. I unpacked everything. I laid on the couch and I thought I'd watch YouTube. That was it. Lights out. And then Sunday, I just laid around all day. That's good. Monday, I went for the biopsy and I worked Tuesday, but it was like, <laughs> I'm still on African time. I wake up at like three or four in the morning. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So what is the time difference between Chicago? You're eight hours. Oh. You're eight hours ahead of us. I'm sorry. I don't know if you heard that. You that was a huge lightning. I mean, the, one of the biggest I've heard. Whoa! Oh, no. Thunder, huh? Thunder. Uh -oh. Yeah, thunder. Sound like you're in for a thunderstorm. Yeah, well, it's been going, but that was like a major loud. Well, I didn't hear. I'm, it. Su I'm surprised. I guess it's my microphone didn't pick it up. Interesting. I was doing a, a show with Linda once, and it was a huge storm out and outside of my house, and there were tornado warnings out, and the lights were flickering. <laughs> Linda's going, is that thunder? I'm going, yeah, it's a terrible storm. I go, if the sirens go off, I said, I am just clicking off, and I am going in the basement, because there were tornado <laughs> warnings out. I'm doing a YouTube show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Yes. And um, we've had very hot, hot weather here. I heard. I heard. Yesterday was 109. Wow. And Today, you're in, wait, where, you're in, where? Uh, I'm in um, Texas. I'm in um, Central, near Austin. Yeah, I heard that it's been ungodly there. Yes. I, I've never seen it uh, this hot. Climate change climate change everything is unusual and it was snowing in in um i have a picture of the snow yesterday well, that's a good thing because they need the water yes and, and my chef said, so actually danny sent me this picture because um i wasn't there when it was snowing but this is what it looked like in mount shasta yesterday wow and wow. i came home to 109 here and it was doing this in mount shasta I like the hot weather, but not 109. No, it's it's too much. It's too much. Yeah. How's the, how's the grid holding up there? It's so far so good. No, so the governor down there does something about it. Well, no, I don't think he's done anything. I think he's just been lucky. <laughs> well, I understand that they're saying now that he passed a law where people, if they're construction workers, that they can't take a break. I'm like, you know what? They should put him out there and make him work in that heat. And let's see how he likes it. Oh, my gosh. That's it's horrible. What kind of law is that? I, that isn't that un, that's unlawful to have a law like that? I suppose it's inhumane. That's for sure. Inhumane. So do I we have time for a few questions? OK, so the the question I have now, um, do you have any questions? Because what I have is mainly they just want to know about Uganda. Now, one person wanted to know about, oh, what they've heard there are uh, Mount Shasta is related to um, some of the lactics, and yes, it is. Would would you? I only have like six. Do you want me to read them back? Read them. Um. Uh, go ahead. Well, this is something about Shasta here. She just this is from Susan Beltran, who was in Shasta with us. She said um, she's had some vivid dreams now that I'm home, but I also want Alice, who did some healing work, to know that my neck pain. What that I was experienced has not returned. Th many thanks for a magical experience. That's what she said. <laughs> um, Andrea Strawn is saying, welcome back, Mel. Thank you for sharing your trip. I hope you do a whole video just about your experience. Well, you kind of did here, but. Yeah, we did pretty much. I'm um, going to put, I want to put together like 
I'll have to go into iMovie and like, I'm not that great at editing, but I'll put something together. And I'm going to use the music from the, the Batwe and some of the other music that they were singing to us. And I'll use that as a background music for that. Nice. I love it. Um, okay. Let me see here. And she's also talking about uh, your potential, you know, your, your, what you're up against and your uh, potential cancer here. Um, and hopefully that it, she's sending you MBO prayers. And she's asking about Mount Hayes in relation to Mount Shasta, which I don't even know where Mount Hayes is. I don't either. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, oh, somebody here said it's a portal for galactic beings, Mount Shasta. Yes. Well, well, the Lemurians. Those are the ones that from the Lemuria. Right. Um, one says, if you can share more about your spiritual downloads and, res and residence on your trip to Uganda. Um, healing, thank you. Healing prayers for successful he healing. Thank you. High vibes. You're a fighter. Uh, Diana and Bootsy. Um, you know, for me, Uganda was just about, you know, nobody that we saw treated us they treated us so well and they were so welcoming. And, you know, I didn't, and I didn't experience any prejudice or anything like that. They, you know, they, they were sharing and, you, you know, you're in places like you're in this kitchen and, you know, of course you, we did tip them, of course, but in some of the places it's like people, they, it's just a different lifestyle and um they weren't uptight about things as as we tend to be here <laughs> um are you there kim because you froze up for a second i don't know if you can hear me but if you can uh i think we have a a malfunction here <laughs> Um, I don't know if Kim can hear me or not. Well, anyway, if we're still broadcasting, I think we lost Kim. It says I'm the host now. Uh, so uh, I don't know what happened, but technical difficulty. Um, somebody asked a question love above one source it says hello glad you're here thank you my mother has an old tabby from a senior who couldn't care for him turns out my mom can't really either they are friends but it's not healthy for her to have him COPD and more so his needs exceed her abilities and his care we all wish we could rehouse him but the shelters are full do you see an outlook for the kitty I do I see the kitty finding a good home that's what I see so um Anyway, all right, everybody, thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording now. And um, thank you for all your healing energy.